In second generation form, Volkswagen's Tiguan compact SUV is a much more sophisticated thing, as it needs to be to take on a wide array of crossover and full SUV orientated rivals. Sharp looks are matched by sharp dynamics and a more sophisticated four-wheel drive system that makes this car a more credible tool when the going gets rough. There's a classier cabin too, and as a result, this car feels just that bit more complete than it ever did before. The dynamics of this Tiguan have been usefully improved this time round thanks to the installation of a lighter, stiffer, high-tech MQB platform that's allowed the engineers to reduce body roll without the need for an unpleasant over-firm ride. Buyers in this country have a preference for ordering this car with four-motion four-wheel drive, so Volkswagen has enhanced that system and added in a four-motion active control setup that allows you to tailor the working of the all-wheel drive system to more specifically suit conditions both on and off the beaten track. It's one of the things that makes this car surprisingly good off-road. Under the bonnet, the range is primarily based around 2-litre TDI engines, with buyers offered a choice of 115, 150, 190 or 240 PS outputs. Most customers opt for the 150 PS mid-range variant we're trying here, which gives you the option of either having or doing without the 4-motion system or the DSG automatic gearbox. Obviously, going without both elements and sticking with two-wheel drive and manual transmission will give you the best efficiency figures, which in the case of the 2-litre TDI 150 PS variant are 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 125 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you must have a petrol model, there are a couple of 1.4-litre TSI options, plus a 2-litre TSI unit with 180 PS. Volkswagen's head of design, Klaus Bischoff, describes the look of this second generation Tiguan model as highly passionate. Well, perhaps it is in a very German sort of way. It's certainly an intricately fashioned thing, cut like a diamond with super sharp slashes and creases. And it's bigger than before, 60 millimetres longer and 30 millimetres wider, though the height has been reduced by 33 millimetres to create a lower, leaner stance. More important, though, of course, is the stuff you can't see, specifically the stiffer, more sophisticated golf-style MQB platform underpinnings that lie beneath the precise, carefully contoured lines. This high-tech chassis has been fundamental in the creation of this slightly bigger, significantly lighter and more sophisticated car that, as we'll see, also uses its interior space more efficiently. You certainly appreciate this from behind the wheel, but what's even more evident from the moment you slide into the hip height seats is that this Tiguan has broken rank with the Qashqai class models it used to compete with and can now offer properly premium class quality. What your dealer salesperson will most want to emphasize though is the huge step forward in media connectivity that this second generation model delivers. The whole cool, calm and connected thing from the ads. An 8-inch infotainment screen dominates the centre stack on all models, upgraded here to the Discover navigation system that's fitted to plusher variants and optional lower down the range. Whatever display you choose, the touchscreen effectively deals with the usual DAB, stereo, Bluetooth phone and car informational functions and with virtually all trim levels is embellished with Volkswagen's clever App Connect setup. Now this is the starting point for the brand's CarNet connectivity. Uh, it's the key tool for bringing the best functions of your smartphone into your Tiguan via the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and MirrorLink systems. What's even cleverer is the potential that Volkswagen's designers have created for much of this information to be brought directly into your line of sight, courtesy of an option we've got fitted here, the Active Info Display. We're getting used to this kind of thing from various brands now, a 12.3 inch TFT screen that completely replaces the conventional instrument binnacle dials with an almost infinitely customizable layout of crystal clear virtual graphics. Time to take a seat in the back. 
which is the area of the car where you most appreciate the benefits of this Mark II model's extra 26 millimeters of interior length. There's 29 millimeters more knee room on offer this time round, and the flexibility to further improve things by using a sliding rear bench. This has been optimized to permit 180 millimeters of back and forth adjustment. That's 20 millimeters more than before. Finally, let's take a look out back. Now earlier I mentioned the fact that this Mark II model has a larger tailgate and this, along with the fact that the load sill has been lowered, makes it slightly easier to get bulky loads in and out. The hatch rises to reveal a spacious 520 litre boot. In summary, what ultimately matters is that this product is good enough to meet its wide-ranging and very difficult brief. It says much that there really is something in Volkswagen's claim that, to some extent at least, this model has subtly redefined what a car of this kind should be. We can't pay it any greater compliment than that.